the discipline without stress teaching model. I'm going to go back a little bit and take you through exactly where we're going to go. The model has got four parts. The first part has got to do with the difference between classroom management and discipline. The second part has got to do with three practices that if you employ, if you practice these principles, you will improve your professional as well as your personal life. Third is the discipline program itself, referred to as the raised responsibility system, because that's what my intention is, to have kids become more responsible. And the fourth part has got to do with how you can take a hierarchy, which I'm going to teach you, to have the youngsters want to put forth more effort in their learning and in the process increase academic performance. So I want to go back a little bit in terms of the entire approach as I look at it. First you have the curriculum. Now the curriculum is something that we get more and more now from the federal government, from our state boards of education, from our professional associations. It is what we teachers are supposed to teach. Then it is up to the teacher to make it interesting. That's the instruction part. So we have curriculum, then instruction. Now the instruction comes in two parts. Again, what the teacher does, but also what the students do. Learning is what the student does. So by way of example, let's assume that you have your lesson that you're going to teach. You have made it meaningful. You've made it creative. You even perhaps have made it a fun, enjoyable. Then it's what the students do. This, we know that learning is an active activity. So, if you have a situation where you do not have a good lesson, you ask yourself, well, did I make the curriculum meaningful? Did I have the kids involved in the activity? Well, let's assume you did have a good lesson, the kids were involved, but it took you 10 minutes to get the thing off the ground. That is classroom management. Here's my point. If you have a particularly bad day, ask yourself, did I make the curriculum interesting, meaningful, joyful perhaps? Was my instruction enjoyable? Was it something that, the young, that I got the kids interested in? I had the kids involved in a good activity. It was very smooth, one transition from the other. But Jason still had poor impulse control. That's discipline. So it's important to remember, discipline does not just stand by itself. It's, and by the way, the raised responsibility will show you how to handle kids like Jason, but it's important to understand, you've got to understand the whole curriculum and instruction and classroom management and discipline approach. So, by way of example, since teachers are in the motivation and relationship business, let's see how different countries do it. Japan, for example, regardless of what the lesson is, if it's literature, if it's science, if it's math, if it's history, the very first thing the instructor does, he gives the youngsters a problem. They grapple with it. They've created, he has had them create interest. Interest is a fabulous motivator. After they've grappled with it and they're curious and want to know, well, what is the solution or what is the instructor getting at, then they have the lesson. Then they have the instruction. Notice what the teacher did, however. She first got the kids' interest. What do we do so often in the United States? We say, folks, this is the curriculum and this is what you should learn. And I'm going to teach it to you. Now let's practice it. Where is the motivation? Kids today have got so many things that they are interested in that if you're not interested in, forget about their learning. Because they're not going to pay attention to you. A kid's attention span is so much shorter these days than it ever has been. We have got to learn how to have lessons that motivate the kids. And 
then we have to go from one activity to another activity that's clear and easy. It's so smooth that the kids don't even notice it. Much the same way that when we get to the discipline program, the race responsibility system, the kids don't even realize that they're being disciplined. The discipline part of the teaching model is referred to as the race responsibility system. It is the third phase of the teaching model. You can have the best discipline system in the world, but unless you have good classroom management by teaching procedures rather than relying on rules, are positive in your communications, eliminate coercion, and learn how to have students influence themselves to change irresponsible behavior, the discipline system will not be effective. I urge you not to wait until we talk about the race responsibility system to begin implementing what I am sharing with you. Little strokes fell great oaks. Rather than planning to implement everything at once, do it in modules. This is the reason that the seminar is broken into modules or segments rather than being presented into or in one long session. For example, before you go any further, reflect on the procedures you are using. Page 96 of the resource guide lists 30 procedures you should consider. The attention management slide we will soon use is on page 97. You can duplicate it from the resource guide. Remember that every page of the resource guide can be printed for you to use in the classroom. 